Okay, let's prove that this language is not regular. So how would you prove that this language is not regular? You always start every single proof of showing non-regularity by supposing that this thing is regular. So let's call this language L. So we're going to first suppose, so this is the first step, suppose L is regular. Then what we need to do is we know, we're assuming that L is regular, so that means that there is this pumping constant, we're gonna call it P for this language L. So there exists a pumping constant, constant P for this language L which corresponds to a DFA of that particular size, but we're not thinking of the actual DFA here. Okay, so there exists this constant. So now we gotta pick a string that's in the language in length, total length, at least P. So the typical strategy here is that there are a lot of strings that you can pick. The strategy is whatever this number is, just substitute it in the exponent here. Well, there's, only one type of exponent is just n. We're gonna have more complicated examples later. Um, but here, we just substitute this p in for n here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a string w to be zero to the p, one to the p. So I'm purely just substituting this p number in for the n. Remember that n is a variable right here because n ranges over all zero, uh, over all integers at least zero. p is just some number, we do not know what it actually is. So I can't just pick the string 0, 1 as an example because I don't know that p is equal to 1. Um, p could be 10 trillion, but this guarantees that the length of the string is at least p. In fact, it's at least 2p here, which is good. Okay, so what we need to do now is to look at every possible way of breaking this string up because if we leave out any possible way of breaking it up, then it might be that that allows us to stay in the language forever. So if I show for every possible way of breaking this string up according to the rules then and show that you can get out of the language at some point, then... The, that means there's no possible way that this thing could have been a regular language because it would break the conditions of the pumping lemma. So what we need to do here is to look at all decompositions. So look at all decompositions. I'm going to shorten it to decomps of, spell of correctly, of W into x, y, z. I know other instructors use different variables. I'm just going to use x, y, z here. Such that, well, remember the three conditions. I'm just going to call them a, b, and c. Well, one of the conditions we're going to actually not do right now, the first two we're going to look at. So the first two pieces, x and y together, are at most p, and the length of y is at least 1. The third condition, that's going to allow us to get the contradiction that we care about. So, but we're going to leave that alone for now. So, what are all the possible decompositions? Well, the x and y pieces are of length at most p. Well, the remember that x and y are the beginning of the string. So, look, x is at the beginning, y is next. So, the beginning of the string, the first two pieces, are at most p characters. So the x and y are entirely within the zeros here. So that means that, well, it could be that the x and y are a lot shorter than p characters, or it could be all p characters. We don't know for sure because we gotta look at every possible decomposition. So all that we know is that x and y contain only zeros and no ones whatsoever. So uh, x is going to be some number of zeros, I don't know how many, but let's just say alpha zeros. So alpha is the number of zeros that x has, is the length of x. And y could be a totally different number of zeros, I don't know for sure. Let's just call it beta for now. 
So what we know is that alpha is at least zero because x itself could be the empty string. Well, we know that y can't be the empty string because of the condition in the pumping lemma. So we know that the that beta here is at least one. That's that's all we know. And technically, we do know that although we're not going to use it, that alpha plus beta is at most p, because that's effectively saying this again. The length of x, y together is alpha plus beta, which is at most p, according to this. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to choose an i, and we got to look at the string x, y to the i, z. So y to the i is y repeated i times. So what we need to do is choose an i such that x, y to the i, z is not in L. Why do we want to do that? Well, the condition of the throat pumping lemma that I left out here says that no matter what value of i that you pick, you always stay in the language. But if I find one example where we actually leave the language, then that contradicts what the pumping lemma says, assuming that the language was regular. So that means that uh, if we find an i that, such that this happens, then the language is not regular. So uh, let's, let's try to investigate what this is. So x, y to the i, z. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste the pieces down. I actually need to say what z is. Well, we know that z is the rest of the string. It's We're breaking up w into three parts. Well, the first two parts were these two pieces here. So z is the rest of the thing. So z is, well, it's got to have some number of zeros. It might have none, but it has some number of zeros. We started off with p zeros right here. We took away alpha in this piece. We took away beta in this piece. So we're going to have p, which is what we started with, minus alpha, because that's what the x part has, minus beta, because that's what the y part has. And neither of the two pieces touched any of the ones, so the z part has all of the ones. So it's gotten greedy. <laughs> it has all of the ones. All right, so then what we need to do then down here is just copy and paste these uh, down here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to copy and paste the x part, which is oh, 0 to the alpha. We're going to have i copies of y. So the number of zeros for this piece is going to be i times beta, because I have beta for each one of them, and I have i of them. So I'm going to have i beta up here, and then just copy one of the z's. So I'm going to have 0 to the p minus alpha minus beta, 1 to the p. And what we notice is that we have a whole run of zeros right here. So we can collect all of the exponents together, which is what I'm going to do. So if we just add them all up, well, we see that we have a plus alpha here and a minus here. So I'm gonna, those are going to cancel. So the, those two are going to cancel. So what I'm going to left with is 0 to the p plus i beta minus beta because I have a plus i beta here and a minus beta here, and I still have all the ones over there. So the only way that this string could ever possibly be in the language is if these two exponents are the same, because that's what the definition of the language is. So what we need to figure out is choose an i, which is what we're trying to do anyway, such that the two exponents are different. So beta, plus i beta minus beta is not equal to p. So then we see, okay, well, we got a p and a p here. So it's equivalent to saying, oops. So this is equivalent. It's I, I'm not trying to work both sides of the equation here. I'm showing in an equivalent statement. It's the same thing as finding an, uh, an i such that i beta minus beta is not equal zero, which is again equivalent to saying if I move the beta over, 
I beta is not equal to beta. And I'm going to divide by beta on both sides. And I'm allowed to do that because beta is not is at least one. It's not zero. If it's something that's not zero, I can divide on both sides of the equation if I wanted to. So again, if and only if i is not equal to one. So I just got to pick a value of i that's not one. That well, it has to be at least zero, but it's not one. So let's just pick i equal two. So let's pick i equal to two. <laughs> that's clearly not one. So therefore, we have found an i such that the resulting string is not in the language. And so therefore, that contradicts the for all statement in the pumping lemma statement. And so therefore, we're able to leave the language. Uh, and we looked at every possible decomposition of the string. And so therefore, L is not regular. Cool. So that effectively proves that this language is not regular. I've done it many times on the channel, but it's worth having a singular video about the topic.